look at the number of parts they got here at Scott Bennett Engineering here in Northampton. They've got round parts, billet parts, stuff made on quite a lot of different kinds of sliding heads. We're going to be talking about all the ways the machine shop has evolved over time uh, with one of their operators here, and an engineer, I should probably say, called Anton, has been here for a long time. We'll go and talk to him in a bit, but also, I don't want to keep you in suspense, but I bet you can guess what this kind of part is. It's a suspension for a motorbike. Um, Forgetting all the parts over there, look at the size of uh, the number of components they're making here. These are all part of a kit. So I, I don't know how, how many there might be here. This might be 200, uh, make 200 of these suspension parts and they make all the parts bar one. That's almost 40 components that go into this assembly and they send, export these all the way to France. Enough about the suspension though. Let's uh, put this down here very, very carefully because it's a good, nice component. Talk to Anton. That's not, not Anton Dubeck, it's Anton Clark. Now, Anton, how are you doing today? Very well, Rowan, thank you very much. Perfect, now you've been working here for a long time. How long have you been working here at Scott Bennett? 41 years. Wow, 41 years, it's an incredible amount of time. So you must yep. have seen things change a little bit over the time you're working here. Ever so slightly, ever so slightly, yeah. Um, we've gone from Old Capstans, Colchester's, um, Cam Autos, indexes, uh, pegboard sprints, to what we have now. Um, I don't know what any of those words uh, mean, unfortunately. <laughs> pegboard sounds very yeah, uh, very yeah. scary and very very cumbersome. Yeah, our, our, old, um, our old production machines that work well in the day, but obviously we've got new production machines now that work even better. Absolutely, so now you're, you're, you're pointing to these, you've got some star sliding head machines. You've got quite a few here. Yeah, yeah. And what do they replace them? What do they do better than the ones they've replaced, maybe? Well, they probably replace the, the index cam autos. Uh, it used to churn out pins and washers. Uh, these obviously still churn out pins and washers, but more advanced pins and washers and, and everything they make now. Here we have a part here, um, a, a typical washer um, that used to, used to come out with... Uh, on a, on a cam auto, but comes out in half the cycle time now of on a sprint. Absolutely, half half the cycle time because the, the technology's moved on so much, but it's not just in uh, sliding heads. Let's keep moving. Not just in sliding heads that the technology's moved on. We've got two very different kinds of machines here now. It's probably quite hard for our cameraman to uh, to get them both in, but on the right-hand side, we've got the newer machine, the left-hand side, the, the older machine. Yep. Could you tell us what kind of parts they both make and, and what the difference is between the older and the newer? Uh, obviously, the Nakimura, Live tooling, uh, fantastic machine, single spindle, works really well the, the, compared to the Saki Sour. Um, we use this now really for, for billet work. Um, it still chunks away at parts. Yeah, still, you're still using it yeah, every day, right? Using it every single day, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's doing a billet job at the moment, I think. So, so this is all billet loaded? Yeah, all billet loaded. No, whereas the Nakamura's Nakamura. are normally... Yeah, bar fed. There's no, there's no bar feed for this anymore, so... Uh, but it, it serves a purpose for us. Absolutely, and what I found fascinating is the fact you're still using all these old machines. Yeah. Um, because, I guess, do they still hit the tolerances that you need? They still hit the cycle times that you need? They, they, they do indeed, yeah. Um, you know, horses for courses, we quote accordingly. Um, they work well. You can, yeah. you can't grumble. Absolutely, um, and I guess once you've had a machine for 15 years, I guess you're not paying off anymore. You don't have to think about the machine time itself. The finance, the finance is long gone. The finance is long gone. It owes us nothing, is the statement. But you always have to have new machinery. Yes. Well, you, some people might not say you do. Why would you, do you think people need to be considering always investing in new machinery like the machine behind it? Well, I, personally, I would say you have to keep up with your competitors. If your competitors are, not, are, are moving on, rather, and you're not, then you're going to get left behind. Absolutely, and we talked about bar feeder a little bit here. So the Takasawa is billet loaded always. You've got bar feeder, bar, bar feeder. feeder. There's another Nakamura we're going to see eventually. Yeah. You'll, you'll sell at the corner in the other yeah. corner that's also got a bar feeder. Why is it important to have this kind of automation as well? Well, that, we always think that gives the opportunity for the setter operator to be doing other things. He can, he, instead of just loading one bar or hand, hand, hand machining, he, he can be doing other things. He, he can be running a cell of two, three, four, five machines even. Absolutely. And you guys, you have a, not a huge number of operators here. No. Um, how many normally people will run, uh, how, many, how many machines will you have run by one person normally? Well, to, to be fair, it will, it will vary. Um, I'm going to be perfectly honest about it. Um, you if you just put, just guess, just yeah, put a, a I'm number on it. say three stroke four. It's a lot of machines it to is, handle. It is indeed. It is indeed. If they have complicated jobs or jobs with difficult to machine material, <laughs> Sometimes if you've got a star sliding head and you've got a week's worth of work, you could just set that going and leave. Exactly. That's effectively yeah. not a machine you have exactly. to run, right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Perfect. Let's keep moving on. So we've got some, uh, some milling machines here. We've got two Haas machines and Morisiki. Yep. How have you seen the, the work holding change in milling machinery? Keep walking this way. Yeah, well, 
we've um, we've gone really from just a typical voice that you'd used to do up to the to the micro lock system, uh, which our uh, milling guy in he uh, he swears by. He's, he's he's never got a problem with it. Um, so that works really well. And this microlock system goes straight onto the machine bed. It completely covers the machine bed. And how is this different to using a, a machine bed with standard T slots? I, I, Ian finds it a lot quicker to, to set. Um, once he's got the jaws made, obviously the jaws are there, slips them straight in, holds the parts, and we never have an issue. I love it. You keep saying Ian, because yeah. otherwise, if you keep talking about milling, you might get asked to do some milling, might you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to clarify, Anton is a turner, born and bred, right? Turner, born and bred. Yeah. 41 years of turning experience, so you can run sliding head and fixed head. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and this is the last machine tool we've got here. Let's keep, let's keep going. Uh, we've got some more Nakamura's here um, and more star sliding head yeah. machines. What I find next interesting, though, is that actually you, you are the production manager here yeah. at Scott yeah. Bennett yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. And what does that role entail? You also run machines. Why, how do you do both? Uh, that's what keeps me so thin, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, how do I do both? Um, well, I just think it's it's years of experience. You get used to it. I've got my two machines here, uh, and I quite happily run the machine shop for the for the owner of the company. Um, it's something I've learned over a period of 41 years. Again, um, I find it quite easy now. It's yeah. For you, got to what you got to run the machine, which is like the like a, like a technical job. But then you've also got to think about the actual running of the workshop. People yeah. deal with machinery, new machinery, old machinery, investments. Yes, uh, keeps the mind ticking over. Um, don't mind a challenge, so uh, and trying to keep customers happy. Happy, you have to juggle those balls. Um, sometimes you might drop a ball and somebody might miss out, but most of the time, I think we do a good job. So uh. you certainly do, and that's why you've been going for such a long time yeah. in the company. Yeah. Let's talk about your machining cell now. So okay. Takisawa, how old is this machine? Uh, year 2000, we brought this, so 23 years old. But actually, it's it's, it's still it's, it's fairly new compared to your career. I hope you're going to be getting a gold medal soon. <laughs> yeah, it uh, it works well, makes good parts. Holds good tolerances. Um, we make some good parts on there. So, and you've also got a new bar feeder on we it. We have indeed. Yeah, yeah. The hydro feed can't go wrong. I've never seen a, a a bar feeder that's newer than a lathe. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. First time for everything, right? Yeah. Um, so Takasawa still really good up. And also, have you got a? Is this a quick change color system as well? No, that's not a quick change color. System. That's the old um, uh, multi bore collet. Standard multi bore collets. Okay, I'm sure people who, who have used these machines in the yeah. past, who've yeah. Uh, yeah. who've got a few years under their belt, might yeah. recognise these yeah. components. Most definitely. Yeah, Brilliant. And then that takes us to the new one of the newer machines in the, in the shop floor, which is the uh, the Nakamura here, which is this is a special kind of machine that surprised you when it first landed on the shop floor. Why did it surprise you? I was shocked, actually, at the uh, the, the amount of work. Let me it, grab this vintage it, part it, here. It, it, <laughs> the amount of work it could do. Um, like I say, coming from a turning background, bizarre how it can suddenly do make parts out of out of round bars um, like that. Uh, totally new to me but it obviously can do it so it can do it and that surprised you but i guess yeah. what i've found what i've from from spending the day with you anton i think that it's quite obvious that you're interested always in doing the best thing that you can possible and improving every single day and you're not afraid of change are you no not at all no, nobody knows everything um we we're always learning and evolving so um you know uh, even at 58 years old, I can still uh, I can still learn. Brilliant. And at 58 years old, you are pumping out all loads of these locking yeah. rings for suspensions well, right now. Yeah, How many yeah. of these do you make a month? Uh, 3,000 we're making at the moment. 3,000. Absolutely amazing. Here at Scott Bed Engineering, things have changed for four, over 41 years. Hopefully oh. for the better. Oh, without a, sh without a shadow of a doubt. Without a shadow of a doubt, yeah. yeah. Perfect. That's been Swarf and Chips, Scott Bed Engineering.